What is up, everybody? What is going on? It is Thursday. It is October 25th. And of course, this is, well, it's about 11.06 a.m., a little bit late. Man, we got a lot of people in chat already. That's kind of interesting that this many people would be on chat this quickly. Uh, let's see. So, you know what, guys? Let me let me turn this volume down a little bit on this trailer here. Vive and Chill. Do you like the trailer, Vive and Chill? It's always been one of my personal faves. Okay, uh, let's see here. I'm going to minimize that. Move this over here. All right, so here we are. So, yeah, um... So basically today, I don't really have too much lined up today. So we're just, it's going to be a bit of a shit show. Apologies for that. I've actually been working on the website a little bit. I was updating all of the most wanted charts, taking some of the games like Evasion has already come out. Astrobot has already come out. And so what I have to do is on that website, I have to go to the, you know, the most wanted charts and kind of redo them a little bit and update them a little bit. And so I have done that, been working on that a little bit. The next thing I need to work on as far as the website is concerned is our last 90 days charts. And the last 90 days charts is what we do is we look at the best VR games that have come out in the last 90 days for the Vive or for the Rift or for PlayStation VR and we try to break down the best uh, games of the last 90 days. So I need to update that. And then after that, we need to update all of the main rankings. Probably very early in like November 1st or something, we'll update all the main rankings. Okay, Vive and Chill is too loud. It's crazy. I don't hear it at all. I, I don't hear it whatsoever. Um, man, what is the deal here? I got to figure this out eventually. Uh, let's see. Um, so I'm on my headphones here. Why am I not hearing the trailer at all? It also now had you now I hear the trailer. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do with uh, the volume control here. Oh, not the trailer. Um, so, oh, vibe and chill. Okay, you're saying the actual fan itself is too loud. You know, it's funny, man. I got to talk about this for a second. There will be, okay, they don't even hear the trailer. Okay, that's good because I'm, I don't hear shit. And now I hear it a little bit. Okay, now, now I hear the trailer a little bit. But one of the things is, that's kind of funny is there will be comments in chat. And I need to raise this chat. Let me raise this chat because I'm, I got to cut off a couple of the people. Yeah, we're, there we go. Let's go ahead and cut it off like right about, we'll cut it off right, right about here. So there we go. It has an echo again like yesterday. Okay, you know what the echo is? L let me go ahead and turn the, the trailer all the way down. See, the echo is because I'm using the mic auxiliary rather than having a separate Bluetooth mic. Let me go ahead and do, let's see, audio output capture. Um, okay, and then let me add the, uh, no, that's headphones, so that's not that. Uh, let me remove that. Hold on a sec, guys. I'm going to I'm going to try to fix this this problem with the echo. I I, I think I know what the echo is. Um, audio input capture. Okay. okay. And, and then, then what we're going to do is I'm going to select my blue snowball. snowball. That's, That's the, the microphone, microphone that I'm using. using. So, so now, now I have um. Uh, so, so now I have the blue snowball, snowball and then now I have my regular mic. So, so what I'm going to do. Let me move. I gotta move this up here. So, so I'm gonna mute, mute my regular mic, and then it should still have it should still have my blue microphone. So you guys can still hear me now, right? You guys can hear me now. I know there wasn't there was probably an echo real bad there for a second, um, but it should be good now. Let me go ahead and rename properties. Okay, wait. No. Uh, rename uh, blue snowball. So let me rename this blue snowball. Blue Snowball. Okay, so that's Blue Snowball. Okay, so I think what I'm going to have to do... See, the thing is, in OBS, it has this one setting that is mic slash auxiliary. And I was able to set that as my Blue Snowball. 
And I thought, okay, that will just have it for every little scene that I go through. It'll have that. I don't need to have a separate blue snowball. But then what it was doing is sometimes when I would run the trailer, like it was using my desktop audio and that's why you got that um, that reverberation. So I got to fix that for every scene I go to. That's the only thing that sucks is now I have to add Blue Snowball to each of the individual scenes. So let me go ahead. I'm going to... Okay, so I'm back. I'm back. Yes, I know you guys had no audio there because I have to go through now and I have to add this on each of the individual screens now. I, I was trying to get away with not having Blue Snowball on there, but then what it does is it takes my desktop audio and so, so sometimes if I'm running a trailer or something, you're getting double sound and that is very unfortunate. But here is the Witching Tower. It is available right now. It is 20 bucks. So I guess the good news is it's 20 bucks. The bad news is it played pretty craptacular for me. Didn't work very good for me at all. I'm not sure um, what kind of reviews it got around the internet. And I'm not even sure what Paradise Decay had to say about it. So Paradise, um, my question for you is what was your take on the witching tower did you have like hitchiness did you have that stuttering did you have that that like it was kind of janky did you have that because i definitely had that oh steve bishop is checking in you don't need them on each scene in windows you must have listen enabled on snowball configuration yeah i don't know that's something i need you know what honestly steve like straight up i'm talking to steve now in chat one of these days, me and Steve, like when Steve has like a half an hour to burn, I need Steve to come on and help me dial in all my settings on uh, on OBS. Because like Steve knows this shit really, really well. Okay, so Paradise says, I tried it today, Anthony, but the game's .exe was missing. Also for lots of people in the forums waiting on a patch. Huh, I wonder if they patched the game and screwed it up. Um, so you, didn't you play it though? Because I thought you had a video for it. But yeah, uh, Witching Tower VR currently available. Doesn't seem to be the greatest in the world. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on. You know, one of the things I did want to mention real quick here is... Let me get back over to my other section here. Okay, so I wanted... Uh, let's see, we need to go to all files. Okay, all files here. Um, infinite Immersion. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this on the screen. Ah, it didn't work. Huh. Let me see. Game trailer window. Browse. Oh, that's a JPEG. That's why. Um, where? What happened to it? All files. Oh, here it is. Okay, I got it. Okay, so we had this comment yesterday. This is Infinite Immersion, and this was at the very, very beginning of yesterday's show. He says, Hi, Anthony, longtime subscriber since September 2017. This is the first time I've had the chance to catch your, your live show. That was, I believe, yesterday at the very beginning of the show. I completely missed this, and I just want to say, Hey, what's up, Infinite Immersion? Glad to have you. So unfortunate that I didn't see this comment. It would have been nice to say hi to you live, you know, when, when that was first happening. Didn't see it. Okay, why don't we go ahead and check out a trailer. This is called Crazy Machines VR. And so I'm going to go ahead and throw on the volume here a little bit. And let's go to the game trailer window.
So that is Crazy Machines VR, and this game is actually available right now. The publisher is Wild River Games. The developer is Fact Software, and this is on Steam right now. Um, as I'm speaking right now, like this game is available. Here it is, Crazy Machines VR. It was released today on October 25th. The normal price is 20 bucks. It does have a 20% discount. It is $16 right now. Uh, the offer ends on November 1st. So Crazy Machines VR, this is what we call a stealth release when a game basically comes out of nowhere and says, guess what guys, I'm available today, right now. So it looks like there's a lot of good hand interactions on this game. I'm taking a look at the screenshots and so it kind of looks a little job simulator-ish in terms of the fact that you're probably going to be picking up a lot of things, moving a lot of things around, doing a lot of different things with it. Kind of interesting. Uh, don't know anything really about this game. Like, this game came out of nowhere. I haven't heard of that game. But it is called Crazy Machines VR. It is available right now. And you can go ahead and grab that for $16 if you like it. Okay, uh, let's see what folks are talking about over here in chat. Mamefan says, I bought that but haven't tried it yet. Crazy Machine. Oh, okay, so he went ahead and grabbed that. Uh, let's see. Paradise is saying, hopefully I'll get to playing Witching Hour tomorrow. They just released a new patch for the missing EXE problem. Um, and you know what? Okay, Logan68 says, has anyone seen Valve's test game Moondust? For Knuckles, CE2, or am I late to the party? Yeah, we have seen that. And the thing about that Moondust video is I think it again points to the possibility that we could get a Portal VR. I, I really believe that one of Valve's secret games is Portal VR. Um, but anyway, another announcement that we have is Gun Club is going to be coming to PlayStation VR. This is Gun, Gun Club right here. We can check out the PlayStation VR trailer real quick. That is Gun Cup Gun Club VR for PlayStation VR. Did it have a date on there? I'm trying to look for the date of this. I'm not seeing the date. I just looked up a story on it. Um, developers at the Binary Mill have released a new trailer for the PSVR version of Gun Club. Yeah, we saw that. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, I was trying to see if they had a date. Not seeing a date. Um, but you know what? Arthans... VR usually has like dates and shit. So let me bounce over to them and see if they got it. No, I'm not seeing it over here either. So not sure what the date is for Gun Club, but I believe it is coming to PSVR very soon. Never tried this. I know a lot of people like this on the Oculus Rift. I believe it's been available for the HTC Vive for quite some time. Um, every once in a while, we do get some votes for Gun Club VR for like the top 100 Oculus Rift games or, you know, people submit their top 20 and every once in a while, the Gun Club is in the mix. But I don't know if it's made our top 100 on the Oculus Rift. It might have made it in like the 90s or something, but I know it's made the top 200 of Oculus Rift and uh, some people really like it. So that is coming to PlayStation VR. And we do have one more new game. It's Gun Club VR. Shurzad Khan City is saying, Gun what? Gun Club VR is what it's called, and it is heading to PlayStation VR. I wonder if it'll have aim controller support. It probably should, especially when you have any kind of two-handed weapons. Seems like that would make sense. And then we have another brand new release, I believe. This is called VR Trivia Battle. This is on Viveport. I don't know if it's also on Steam. Let's check this trailer out real fast. Super 
that is VR Trivia Battle, and it is available right now. Now, this is the Vive Port trailer for it, but it is on Steam. Uh, it is on Steam right now. If I go ahead and switch over, you can see it right here. This is VR Trivia Battle. It just came out a couple of days ago on the 23rd, and it's free to play. So you can at least download this thing. You can kind of try it. I'm not sure at what point you have to start paying some money to unlock certain things. It says free to play, unlock for unique avatars and thousands of new questions. In single player mode, players compete against the cunning quiz queen, an AI opponent who never holds back. Classic mode pits two players against each other. Um, and there's trivia mode is the ultimate social experience where three to eight players compete against each other. So I'm not sure exactly how much of this game you can get by just downloading the free version. But if you do download the free version, at least you get to see how it performs on your PC and you kind of get to see the style of it. So not a bad way to go. So that is VR Trivia Battle. If I can remember about that, I will check it out to, uh, a little bit later today. Might as well. I don't mind these little downloads. It's always cool. Okay, so let's see what folks are talking about over here in chat. I am Rut says, Anthony, I bought extra Oculus touch controllers as my left controller was strafing on its own. I can confirm, even though it doesn't list on the Amazon site, it did arrive with an extra sensor. So maybe it's one of these things where as long as they still have supplies, you'll, you'll get the extra sensor, but you're not necessarily guaranteed. Like maybe eventually they're going to run out of supplies and then you just get the two controllers. But I've always figured if you need an extra sensor anyway, go ahead and buy that touch package if you can find it because then you get two backup controllers and if something goes wrong, you're good to go. That's what I've done. I have four sensors in here. So I ordered, I think I ordered one sensor just a la carte and then I got one sensor with another touch package and I have a backup pair of touch controllers. They're sitting right over there. I have four of them. Four of them. So if one of my Oculus Rift controllers gets smacked up against the wall or something goes bad, I'm good to go. So I don't have to worry about that too much. Um, let's see. Epix911 made a boo-boo last night and had to take his video down. I wonder what happened there. Uh, what was the boo-boo? Um, and let's see. Oh, title read Oculus Rift 2 is canceled. Uh, you know what? I'll ch Check this out, guys. I want to know, for you guys out there, you know how I believe, like, there's people that believe the whole Oculus Rift kerfuffle is much ado about nothing, right? I believe that it is much ado about something. I believe where there's smoke, there is fire. And I, I believe in the original TechCrunch article. Now, I don't believe it's like PC VR is dead and let's all cry a river and all of that. I don't believe any of that. But I do believe there is legit drama that is going on. But I'm curious, like, Sebastian... Uh, Sweet Viver, um, Epics, uh, the Virtual Reality Oasis guys, you know, all the other different YouTubers that are out there, Ben Plays VR, the other YouTube, other YouTubers that are out there that maybe they do believe this is much ado about nothing and this is being completely blown out of proportion. And I think it would be kind of cool to actually be on a show with another one of these people and we could kind of go back and forth and kind of argue it back and forth. I think it'd be fun. Like, you know, if Sebastian of MRTV, for example, like if he really believed it was much ado about nothing, people are blowing it way out of proportion, then hey, I can come on the show. I'm one of these people that are blowing it way out of proportion. I think it would be kind of fun to have that back and forth uh, dialogue there. Same thing with like epics. You know, I'm not sure what everybody else's take is on this. Um, other people, like some people might kind of be agreeing with me, but not so much. And other people might be completely disagreeing with everything I'm saying. So that would be kind of interesting to have a little back and forth about that. Okay, Paradise Decay says, Anthony, they all think it's much ado about nothing. So they really they really think there's going to be like a, a legit Oculus Rift 2.0 that's coming anytime soon. Like, like they don't believe that that project was canceled. Like I, I know there's going to be an Oculus Rift 2.0 but i think it's been delayed another year like like whatever timeline they were on add another year onto that 
And these people really don't believe that. They really think this is like super minor and, and it's just a Kerr fluff. Uh, man, I, I completely disagree with that. But it would be fun to have a debate. I have no problem. So anybody out there, uh, Virtual Reality Oasis, MRTV, Sweet Viver, Ben Plays VR, Cass and Chari, uh, who else out there is there? Face Palm, uh, you know, any of those guys that are out there. If anybody wants to have me on their show and we can debate back and forth, I, I think that would be very fun. I would I would enjoy that. That would be interesting. Um, but I just did want to mention that. Okay, so let's see. Was there any other thing I wanted to get into before we get into more shit show? Uh, no, you know, I think we pretty much covered the, the majority of it here. Oh, you know what? There is one thing I did want to pop on the screen. Do you guys remember when I said... We were talking about Astrobot, and I said that you know Astrobot is so damn good, and, and I was trying to think, Sony needs to take advantage of this situation of having this game Astrobot, and I said the one thing that Sony really needs to do, I think, is to have kiosks at your local mall, you know, at your local mall, set up a little kiosk and let a lot of people try Astrobot. And here is a picture. I found this on the PSVR subreddit where they're actually doing this. I don't know what mall this is. I don't know where this is located, but this is apparently very recent that they are setting up these PlayStation VR kiosks at the mall. And I think this is a very smart way to do it. And you can see here, they're kind of in, a, in the middle of of a of a uh, central area in the mall so this is taking up a lot of space here to do what they're doing here i don't think they necessarily need to make such a big thing out of it because it's got to be pretty expensive to rent this space here but i was always thinking of having a much smaller little kiosk that would just basically be in malls and it would have uh two demo stations for astrobot and just keep putting people into Astrobot. I think it's a really good idea. John Shrewbook, does banger mean good? Yeah, pretty much. It, in my opinion, it does. You know, like a banger of a game is kind of the way I talk about it there. Um, Dr. Freeman says, will you be talking about Zero Caliber Demo releasing today? You know, I did hear about that. I was going to get into that when we, when we bounced over to the Vive subreddit. But yeah, uh... Now I got an error here. I'm trying to look it up on Steam. Zero caliber. Yeah, I did hear. Oh, now it doesn't want to work at all. Okay, let me go back and just go back to our favorite Google. Zero caliber Steam. Yeah, I did hear something about a demo for zero caliber. Weird. I can't get on Steam now. It's like Steam down or something. Like, I, like I'm trying to Google and just go to Steam and it's not letting me do that. But yeah, I did I did read that somewhere that Zero Caliber was coming. There was going to be a demo. So what we could do, guys, is we could go ahead and bounce over to the Vive subreddit right now. Banger is not a good car. Yeah, I know. I've I heard uh there's a, a Connor McGregor video that I saw where Connor McGregor is talking about how he was driving in a banger of a car down the road, but he would he would imagine that he was in a drop top Bentley in Southern California with the palm trees and all that. And that Conor McGregor has brought his dreams to reality because now he is in a drop top Bentley in Southern California driving along with all the palm trees. And he talked about a banger of a car. So yeah, I do know that sometimes banger is used as a really bad car. And you know what? Chris Gould is talking about Rogan, Joe Rogan. Rogan looks cool. And you know what? Our guy, Paradise Decay, Paradise Decay has had his 15 seconds of fame. It's not 15 minutes of fame, but it's 15 seconds of fame. He was on a Joe Rogan podcast. Paradise Decay's voice is on a Joe Rogan's podcast. In fact, if you go to Paradise's channel, you can check out a clip of that really really cool yeah paradise he got his 15 seconds of fame he is right up there with our boy noah for magic leap noah had his 15 minutes of fame paradise got about 15 seconds so paradise you still got 14 minutes and 45 seconds left of fame to go so you are in the mix 
yeah yeah paradise is living large okay so let's go over here to the vive subreddit and see what some of the top stories are crazy machines vr we did see that launch trailer it is available now kind of coming out of nowhere with a stealth launch now i've heard about this this is in the news a little bit too pimax 2.0 base stations and controller package for three hundred dollars and htc wants 200 buckarinis for a single controller that has some dark paint on it some some dark blue paint 200 bucks i mean how redonkulous is that now here's what i would caution people though with this pimax this 300 dollars package when are you actually going to get that package and pimax so are you telling me that that valve has given pimax the instructions on how to make a 2.0 base station and Pimax is manufacturing these themselves. I kind of worry a little bit about that. I, I worry a little bit, bit about that. The $300 package sounds really good, but when is anybody actually going to get it? Witching Tower VR is out now. It is released. Anyone played it yet? I played it. I didn't think it was very good, but I don't know. I'm still concerned that maybe my PC has some some issues here. I'm looking at what people are saying, um, and you know nobody really has played it too much. So there's supposedly five to six hours of gameplay. The visuals are breathtaking. The visuals are good. The visuals are good. I will give it some good visuals. And the price, $19.99, not a terrible price. And I kind of feel like that price has slightly been influenced by the fact that maybe it does have some issues. And so by coming in at a little bit of a lower price and then they'll probably say, look, we're going to try to button this up. It'll be smooth. It'll be working great in the very near future. That is Witching Tower VR. I had some issues with it. Um, let's see what else. Are, okay, is Zero Caliber VR demo still dropping today? Let's go ahead and check in on this thread. Demo is supposed to release today with early access next month on November 9th. It was delayed before, so I'm hoping it doesn't happen again. Um, according to the developer six hours ago. Okay, so yeah, it looks like the demo is going to come at some point today. So hopefully I will remember that and get into that um 10 hearts we've heard about that one as well and that seems to be pretty much most of what is going on over here on the vive subreddit so let me go ahead and bounce back over to chat and see what people are saying uh, on chat and everybody is oh paradise to case says he even put a copyright on his clip that is hilarious yeah he wants all that money that you're going to get paradise from your channel you're making you know, just wheelbarrows of money. He wants a little bit of that. That is so funny. Um, and then HTC is smoking. Uh, I think they're talking there about the $200 controller. Um, and Sweeviver estimated the DFs to be next January 19th. Not sure what the DFs are. Um, oh, Pimax describes the $300 as a deposit which is really just a pre-order. And there's our boy, Steve Bishop, in the building. Steve, did you ever get a chance to try the Witching Tower VR? I know you wanted to try it, but because we got a code for the Witching Tower VR. VR Roundtable got a code. And I reached out to Steve and Gary to see if they played it because I was wondering, are they having slight issues with it like I was? But neither of them had jumped into it at that point. So I'm sure we'll be discussing it on Sunday's episode of VR Roundtable, but I don't know if Steve's gotten into it yet. Um, but here Steve is checking in again. He says lighthouses should be essentially the same as HTC's. The controllers are questionable. Well, again, you got to trust Pimax. You got to trust that their manufacturing process is going to put it all together and all of that. Let me get off. I got to get off of this PlayStation uh, uh, mall thing. Let me throw a different trailer on here. Hold on one sec, folks. Grab a different trailer. Um, uh, let's see, we can go ahead and let's try this runes. Uh, no, let's see. Um, what should we try here? How about a serious Sam trailer? I'll throw on a serious Sam trailer. I got to make sure to turn the volume down a little bit here. And Steve Bishop says it's on my list for tomorrow night. He's playing pop one tonight, whatever the hell that is. And Tezrim, gentlemen, he's checking in late. Okay, that's delivery forecast. We are talking about the DF earlier there on Sweeviver. 
And Prince Alexander says Pimax is still cheaper than when the HTC Vive Pro launched. That is true. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and let's go ahead and check out Upload VR as our shit show continues. And let's go ahead and bounce back over here. So here we are in Upload VR. It says visit the Haunted Graveyard for its stellar performances. Not sure what they're talking about. This, this is um, 32 OptiTac cameras to capture the body movements of performers along with helmets for facial capture. Uh, HTC Boss claims Rockstar Games not done with VR. Okay, that's kind of interesting. This must have been, because uh, I saw some people talking about Red Dead Redemption and stuff like that in chat. And so Joel Breton, GM of Vive Studios, talked about how early work from developers like Bethesda, Ubisoft, and Rockstar had paved the way to bring more companies into the VR ecosystem. So now everybody is out there building VR. Unfortunately, it's just not public yet. So all of the third parties are working on VR now. That sounds mighty interesting. I mean, we've really got to hope that's true because, I mean, we're having so many conflicting claims. You got the CCP guy talking about they expected VR to be three times as big as it actually was. And then you got this HTC Vive boss that says, wait a minute, Rockstar, they're banging away. Grand Theft Auto V is coming to VR. They're banging away on it as we speak. We just don't know about it. I don't know about that. Drone Striker review, as simple as shooters come. Uh, let's see. And yeah, Siren hits PSVR next month. We talked about that a little bit. And um, oh, Rogan is a visually striking take on Thief in VR. See, I thought people were talking about Joe Rogan, but I guess this is another game. Rogan, the Thief in the Castle. Okay, that's interesting. Um and so that's some of the news that is going on over there on Upload VR. I'll go ahead and bounce back to chat. Steve Bishop, oh, Population One. Okay, so you're in the Population One, uh, you're in the Population One, like Alpha or something like that, right? That would be cool. I'm seriously curious how good are the graphics of Population One when you're in that Alpha? Do they really look as good as all the trailers make them look, because God damn, it looks amazing in the trailers. Um, Shirzad Khan City says, Red Dead 2 is almost a perfect game. Imagine it in VR on Quest 5, yeah. And Zing is half price on Steam at the moment. And Zing is an awesome game to be sure. Uh, let me see if I can finally get on Steam now. Let's look, Zing, The Land Beyond. Zing the Land Beyond. I'll see if I can find it on Steam. On uh, Steam. Yeah, so here we are. I am on Steam. Oh man, Zing the Land Beyond is only 10 bucks. Yeah, this is a must buy, in my opinion. Anybody that doesn't have this, 10 bucks, 50% off. The normal price is 20 bucks, which is already a very good price. That's already a fair price to be sure. But they just chopped it in half. Now you can grab it for 10 That is Zing the Land Beyond. You know, I was wondering, is this game still coming to PlayStation VR? Because we haven't heard anything about Zing for such a long time. I mean, it's crazy. Um, but I really hope it's still coming to PSVR because I'm hoping that they can make some extra money. Like White Lotus Interactive, they did not have very good sales. A lot of people don't know very much about Zing the Land Beyond. I mean, I mean, think about this. You guys want to talk about how PC VR is not doing very well right now? Because look at, I mean, here's an example of how PC VR isn't doing very well in terms of like developers selling a lot of games and being profitable and that sort of thing. Take this game, for example, Zing the Land Beyond. This is a perfect example. Very positive. Very positive. Not mostly positive. Not positive. Very positive. 79 reviews. Now, that sounds okay if this came out September 2018. But no, this came out September 21st. 
2017. Zing has actually been available for an entire year. It's had a fair price for most of its life. I mean, it was only 20 bucks, I think, ever since the very beginning. It might have been 25 for a minute and then went to 19 really quick, or maybe it was 19 the whole time. And now it's half price, but this is a great example of PC VR is struggling a little bit because if a high quality, just a magnificent game like this, it just gets rave reviews from pretty much everybody that's screwed around with this, has nothing but good things to say about this. And if its sales are still this kind of craptacular, that's an example of what we're talking about here. It's a little disappointing. And uh, so Steve says he can't say a word. He signed an NDA. Uh, Main fan says, Steve, how often do you sign NDAs? Yeah, that's news to me. I didn't even know about an NDA. That is cool that Steve got in there. I wonder if that's being offered to everybody on VR Roundtable and I just didn't know about it because I often, VR Roundtable, we have like our own VR Roundtable email and developers will email us and give us codes and different things. And I don't normally check that very often. Um, so who knows, maybe I could get in there as well, although I'd probably have to fill out some kind of special form. Uh, Paul Smith says, loved Zing, 22 hours and didn't finish it. Last level got a bit annoying, but still incredibly blessed. Zing, such a great game. Um, and DLG27 says, Zing is a super small studio. Yeah, White Lotus Interactive, they are they are a very small studio to be sure. Um, and Kevgret says, Zing update for PSVR, unofficial update. We've moved through the VR specific testing and have moved on to the general stuff. We'll be making an announcement once we pass. Yeah, see the other thing about Zing, okay, Steve is saying it wasn't offered to VR Roundtable. So Steve is very blessed and you know they specifically sought Steve out. Uh, because he's just that great and they wanted him to get into Population 1. But no, that's super cool. That is awesome. Population 1 looks like a banger ass of a game as far as I can say. And Steve Bishop is saying, you should check it more often. Yeah, I should probably check out our regular VR Roundtable email quite a bit more often. Um, and Hussein X says, yeah, quite sad. People not giving Zing a go. It's too good of a game. And it's gotten some pub. It's gotten some pub on the various Reddits. Like somebody should make a new Reddit post on the Vive Reddit and the Oculus Reddit saying, bros, there's a weekend deal for Zing. It's only 10 bucks. You got to be insane in the membrane if you don't grab yourself some Zing because it is a game to grab for sure. I love Zing and I, I love the music of it. I love the vibe of it. Every time I went into Zing, it just made me feel good. Like it's just, it's a, it's a, it's the feel good experience of the year. You always get these movies. It's the feel good experience of the year. Zing really is. Zing really is the feel good experience. Okay, let's go ahead and check out the Oculus subreddit real quick. Um, so bouncing over here to the Oculus subreddit, Crazy Machines VR. We saw the launch trailer for that. Facebook confirms it's building augmented reality glasses. Includes interview with Ficus Kirkpatrick. Um, so yeah, we knew this. We've known Facebook has hired a ton of people in AR. Facebook is going to get into the AR game. They know, just like I know, they know that VR and AR is a... It's a runaway train. It has left the station and it is never going to stop. VR and AR is going to dominate virtually all entertainment until we can make some incredible holograms where you don't have to put anything at all on your head. Maybe a hundred years from now, that will eventually happen. But until then, VR and AR is an unstoppable train. Facebook knows this, so they're going to be banging away on AR just as hard as they're banging away on VR. And you can better believe that their AR is going to be completely standalone with its own private ecosystem. So, you know, that is going to continue. Watch the Lone Echo. 2 trailer experience on Rift. Isn't this crazy, guys? We just were talking about this yesterday. I was just talking about the Lone Echo 2 trailer, how you can check it out on the Oculus Go, and it is a really cool experience on the Oculus Go. And people in chat were like, 
why is this not available for the Rift? It, the Rift should be able to do it no problem. Well, here we go. Apparently, it is going to be available on the Rift. This is from Oculus.com. So, yeah, here it is. Um, it's free. You can grab it. Um, it is now 1.68 gigs. So, you can go ahead and try this on your Rift. Um, I'm not sure if this just popped out today, um, but it is there. So, might be curious to try this on my Rift just to kind of compare the differences. You know what's funny, actually? You could try this on your Rift, set it up on your Go, and do a A, B, you know, quickly flop the headsets on and off and try to see how good are these optics that are in the Oculus Go. Is it really a better experience in the Oculus Go compared to the Rift? But we can try Lone, Tra Lone Echo Trailer over there now. That is nice. Battlefield style VR with 64 player matches. That, of course, is War Dust. It is still getting a lot of hype. Um, now, I saw this one, a free experience for retro fans. They're talking about MUVR. And I, I was looking at the comments here. This is something I, I would kind of like to try this, but I was scrolling down here and somebody had a comment. Okay, here it is. Eh tried it lots of hoops to jump through just to get to that point but i just get a black screen after it starts see that's my biggest worry like sometimes some of this retro stuff you got to jump through a million freaking hoops to get it up and running properly and a lot of times i don't have the time for that like i don't you know I, i'm kind of spoiled and it's kind of first world problems, but that's why I tried that other demo, that uh, 3D NES VR demo that is on Steam, because it's on Steam. You just download it. All you need is a Super Mario, uh, Super Mario Brothers ROM in some folder on your desktop, and bada boom, bada bing, you could try 3D NES VR. Now this MUVR, you probably have to jump quite a bit of hoops to do that. I'm sure that Main Fan will jump through those hoops because he's really into this stuff, so he probably wants to check it out. Main Fan, have you tried that yet? I don't know if Main Fan's still in chat. Um, okay, let's see what people are talking about over here in chat. Um, <clears throat> so Scorpion2 says, is the trailer in VR? Well, it's kind of a special 360 version of the trailer. Now, the thing is, on the Rift, technically, they could do the trailer in VR where it's actually operating within the game engine, but I seriously doubt they're doing that. It's kind of like they converted it, kind of in the same way they did with Henry and with some of the other experiences. They basically rendered it, and so you're basically sitting there, and it kind of... It feels like it's really running an engine, but not quite. Um, and then, let's see. Uh, Crunchy says, I am expecting Apple to own the mobile AR market, although they will be one of the last people to jump in. But yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody would be shocked by that. Anyone catch Linus's VR video yesterday sponsored by Oculus? I didn't catch that, but I saw that it was sponsored by Oculus. I did thought that, I did think it was quite curious about that. Um, let's see. Is Anthony on another rant today? No, CJ. I'm sorry. CJ, this is what we call a shit show. So I do these shows every so often, and the shit show basically means that there was very little preparation done prior to the show. And the reason there was so little preparation is I was banging away on updating some VR game ranking stuff. And as soon as I'm done with this episode, I got to go back and bang away uh, I got to update the last 90 days charts. I haven't been working on the VR Game Rankings website enough, and so I got to go back to that. And so, unfortunately, it is a shit show. Asterix Gaming says, MUVR is great. Um, Asterix, did you have to jump through a ton of hoops to get it up and running? Maybe there's a YouTube guide that I can go to that'll explain how to get into it. And Main Fan says, Anth, try having an arcade cabinet. Lots of problems. Yeah, you got to be very careful with your arcade cabinets, especially if you're screwing around with the monitor inside arcade cabinets. Because people have literally, and this is no joke, people have literally been electrocuted and died because they were effing around 
with the monitor, like a Wells Gardner monitor that is inside an arcade cabinet. Because this, the monitors that are inside arcade cabinets, there's no box around them. There's wires going everywhere. And if you don't know what you're doing, you accidentally touch the wrong thing, you can electrify the shit out of yourself. You got to be very, very careful about that. And see, Greg's VR is checking in and he's saying the same exact thing that I was just about to mention. New Retro Arcade was the same. So many issues getting cabinets set up properly. Yeah, I, I felt exactly the same way. Like, I went into New Retro Arcade Neon. I thought it was super cool. You know, how cool is it to walk around inside a, a full-size arcade and to have Defender and to have uh, Asteroids and Centipede and all these games lined up. And the hearing, like the, the sound, the 3D audio is really good. It's positional 3D audio. And so you'll barely hear Defender. You'll barely hear Crystal Castles off in the distance. And it really has that sound of the arcade. And you look down at the carpet. It's got the perfect freaking arcade carpet that we all remember from the 80s and shit. But trying to get the ROMs and trying to get the cabinet uh, artwork and everything set up so it really looks like it looks like in the trailer, like the proper way, I gave up on it. I gave up on it after a while. It was too hard. I, you know, I, I couldn't figure it out and I just said F it because it was too many hoops to jump through. So I kind of, it was kind of unfortunate from that standpoint. And Mame Fan says, Serious Sam games in VR are awesome, all of them. You know what's interesting about the Serious Sam games? Uh, they had a free weekend one time. I've never played, never have I played any of these Serious Sam games. But they had a free weekend where you could download basically any one of them that you wanted to. It was like a free weekend for all Serious Sam. And I downloaded this one, Serious Sam 3 VR, and I was going to give it a try. And when I tried to load it up, it just never loaded. I, I don't know what happened. But now I got a 1080 Ti, so now I could probably enjoy this shit. So, Crow Team, when are you going to hook a homie up with another free weekend? Because I definitely would like to try some of these Serious Sam games. Prince Alexander says, always discharge those gigantic ass... Um, arcade monitors before handling them absolutely but see some people don't know what they're doing some people just try to screw around with their arcade cabinets and some people have literally bit the dust how unfortunate is that asterisk gaming says yes i did anthony but all the guides are in the discord cha discord channel for emu vr so there are hoops you got to jump through but if you follow the guide pretty well you might be able to get in there and try it um, Crunchy says, it is a CRT with the capacitor and wires exposed in the back. Not safe to reach back there. Yeah, Main Fan probably knows what the hell he's doing. And then the other thing that Main Fan does is Main Fan, I mean, I'm, I don't want to speak for you, Main Fan, but you might have some arcade cabinets that actually have like a LCD screen in there, right? Or do all of your arcade cabinets actually have legit CRTs with RGB video and the whole deal? Or do any of them have LCDs? Because some people cheat and they'll put a 4.3 LCD up in there. Paul Smith says, I downloaded a full patch thing for Retro Arcade, then just swapped out a few machines for my favorites. Did that work when you did that patch? I mean, was it relatively easy? Because that's what I kind of assumed. I assumed there would be some kind of some kind of zip that you could download somewhere that would basically unload everything. Tom Barr says, so what's the topic? The topic is shit show. It's basically a random topic. Right now, I'm pretty much living and breathing in chat, playing off what everybody's talking about over here. Main fan says he has a four-player emulator cabinet and a real three-player off-road with CRT. Okay. Um, CJ, how do I find the free weekend games on Steam? That is a good question. I think when it came to Serious Sam 3, when I found out about Serious Sam's free weekend, it was all over the subreddits. People were talking about it all over the subreddits, so that's how I found out about it. Why don't we go ahead and check on the PSVR subreddit? It's been a minute since we've checked out VR, uh, PSVR. I don't know that there's really anything new that is going on in PSVR world, but let's go ahead and check it out real quick. Uh, so let's bounce over here. Uh, so some dude just picked up a Skyrim VR bundle for 167 bucks on eBay. That is a steal. And where is Noah? 
when you need him because Noah, our Magic Leap guy, Noah, this is what you want to do. You want to get yourself a Skyrim VR bundle for 167 bucks on eBay because Noah was saying his brother has a PlayStation 4. I'd love to see Noah try some of the best that PSVR has to offer and then compare that to also what he's experiencing in Magic Leap. That would be interesting. I'd love to have him on for an interview after that happened. Um, Paris Games Week starts tomorrow. Wow, we've already... It seemed like we just had Paris Games Week. I guess that was a year ago, and, and it's a year later now. So the new Paris Games Week is coming, and this is usually a pretty good show for new PlayStation VR content. So we might find some new PlayStation VR content. Oh, check this out. What's left after Astrobot? Here's, I responded to this thread. I saw this thread earlier today. So this guy's talking about Golem, Star Child, Daracene, Tetris Effect, Blood and Truth, Borderlands 2, Dreams. Those are all big games that are coming to PSVR either later this year or early in 2019. And here I am, guys. I responded. Here's a pretty good top 40 upcoming PSVR games breakdown. Yeah, there I am. And look, I got seven points on this. So some people have update. Uh, some people have upvoted this. And Fatbot3 is he the main guy? Yeah, he's the he's the OP. And he said this is great. Thanks. Yeah. See, this is awesome. Everybody upvote the shit out of this because that's where people need to recognize that, yeah, we that's what VR Game Rankings, the website, was built for. I, look, I know it's not the greatest website, and I know we don't have the greatest information out there, but what it is great for is if somebody just bought a Rift, if somebody just bought a Vive, if somebody just bought a PSVR, and they really don't have a clue towards what's good, you can go to VR Game Rankings, you can check out our top 100 lists, our top 200 lists, and it's a pretty decent breakdown. You know, it's not a bad breakdown. The, the thing that I always tell people is if you look at the top 100, see, here's another post here. What are the best VR games which have been published and that are coming? And I think I, I, I put a link in there as well. Okay, Gun Club VR announcement trailer. Yeah, we did see. I wonder if they have the date in here. Oh, there's our guy Kev Gret. There's Kev Gret, everybody. Kev Gret is in the building. But I was wondering, do they have a date for that? Kev Gret, do you know if there's a date for this? See, this guy's asking, so when can we expect it? So I guess there's no date yet. This one guy says, I'll pay five bucks for this. Wow, that's pretty harsh. But uh, let me bounce back over to chat, see what people are saying. <clears throat> Okay, so main fan says his off-road arcade cabinet needed a new power supply recently. Kevgret says my monitor is flickering and I'm not sure how to fix it. Um, and Andy Sky says Sirius Sam 3D, the 2D version has over 11,000 positive feedback from Steam. Uh, and Kevgret says, will we get any release dates at at the Paris Game Show? Well, we're still waiting for a release date for Blood and Truth. We were hoping that Blood and Truth would maybe come this year to PlayStation VR, but we're really late in the month of October. I think if it was coming this year, we would know about it, but, but who knows? Maybe at the Paris Games Week, we will get an actual date. And Greg's VR says Noah's been bought already. No, Noah's a fanboy. He is Noah... If you look up fanboy in the dictionary, you should see a picture of Noah. Noah just really bought into the whole Magic Leap dream, and I respect that. I respect that. I'm cool. I like Noah. Noah is a good guy. I like him. He can come on this show anytime he wants to. I like Noah, and he still has that stake in the background that we need to give away. But yeah, Noah's cool. I like Noah. Let's not let's not talk smack about Noah. I, I really wish Noah got his hands, though, on a PSVR and could try some VR stuff. Paradise says, we lost Noah in AR. He's lost. He's never coming back. Forget about him. Uh, and Sloth Monkey, Serious Sam games never interest me in the past, but on a sale last year for Serious Sam 3 VR, I got it. It's so much fast, frenetic fun, very immersive. Um, and so, yeah, that's what we got going on. Kev Gret, yeah, Kev Gret, he is in, he was in the PSVR subreddit. I've seen a number of posts from Kev Gret in the PSVR subreddit. He's pretty active over there. He's talking about, he wants a date for Beat Saber, for Blood and Truth, Star Child, and Golem. Yeah, we, we need dates for all of those. 
Um, and VRM says the VR industry is wild, changing and going in all kinds of directions. You know what, VRM? I couldn't agree with you more. And that's why doing this for me is so fun because we have no idea. And, and I would throw AR in there as well. The VR AR thing, it's going in a million directions. It is the wild, wild west. You know what it reminds me of, guys? See, a lot of you guys are probably too young and, and you didn't experience this, but main fan will know what I'm about to get into right here. So back around 1993, 1994, and 1995, we were making a transition in the video game industry. We had the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo, and those were the dominators. But there were all these other companies that were trying some really crazy shit. Like you had the Panasonic 3DO, you had the Atari Jaguar, and then of course you had the Sega Saturn, you had, you had the, the original PlayStation. There were a lot, you had Neo Geo, Sega CD. There was like a million different things that were going on simultaneously. And you really didn't know for sure who ultimately would end up reigning supreme. You had Nintendo, they had their thing called, uh, God, what was it called? Project Reality or whatever they called it. And they had the Ultra 64, which ended up becoming the Nintendo 64. But basically what I'm trying to say here, is back in 93, 94, 95, it was so crazy. A million different things were going on and anybody, it was anybody's ball game. Anybody could potentially have taken the crown and it ended up being Sony. But I can tell you, man, if you were there in 94, you, you had no idea that Sony was going to end up taking the crown at that point. You would have thought it would have been Nintendo or Sega or whatever. So companies can come out of the blue. They really can. And I think it's a great situation that we're in right now because we have so many different platforms that are going on. We got this AR stuff, this VR stuff. It's going in a lot of different directions. We've got a lot of companies that are throwing a lot of money at the wall and they're trying to see what is going to stick, what is going to work. There's going to be some major failures. There's going to be some major catastrophes. But I really believe this is a very exciting very interesting industry that we're in right now with VR and AR. And that's why I'm so jazzed. And that's why I love having this show every day because I can just, because every single day, I'm going to be here every single day, Monday through Sunday, basically looking at this news, checking it out and kind of celebrating this industry because I think it is an awesome situation. We really are in a great situation. Let's go ahead and bounce back over to the PSVR subreddit though. I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything good. Um, let's see, so blah, 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 blah. This PC VR guy thought Evasion was great. I still have never played Evasion. Um, and let's see, Dev of Redemption's Guild has a poll about how you want to loot chess. Uh, yeah, Redemption's Guild is another game that's coming to PSVR. You know, one thing I can go to if we want to for a second here, since it is a shit show, uh, we can talk about the top 50 most wanted VR games all platforms. So we just recently updated this. Stormland checking in at number one. Lone Echo 2 is coming in at number two. Borderlands jumping up to three. Defector, Population 1, Steve Bishop, Lucky Devil, is getting in there. He must know somebody at Big Box VR. He's got those connections. Steve is dialed in. He is playing the fifth most wanted VR game that currently exists on planet Earth. Blood and Truth. We're hoping for a date for that. Space Junkies. What the hell happened to Space Junkies? When are we going to get a date for that? That is kind of mysterious. We, we at VR Game Rankings believe that Space Junkies might be a December release now. Beat Saber, we're still waiting for the release date. This is for PlayStation VR. This is why it's ranked, because it's still coming for PlayStation VR. Maybe Paris Game Week will let us know on that. Firmament, are, is anybody out there sleeping on firm, Firmament? Cyan Inc., these are the guys behind Abduction. That is coming in early 2019. Echo Combat, remember, that's coming November 15th. That's a couple of weeks away. So Echo Combat, 
will officially be available in not too many weeks. Remember the Elder Scrolls Blades, this weird game that is coming to basically every known platform on planet Earth. You're going to play it on your phone. You're going to play it on your Oculus Go. You're going to play it on your Atari 2600. It's coming to all platforms. We don't really know what the hell this is. And it's kind of weird because we already got Skyrim VR on a lot of these platforms. So how is this going to differ from Skyrim VR? Will there really be a reason for us to grab blades? Um, then we have Nostos. You know, this is going to be this massively multiplayer game. It's using that technology from Improbable, that UK company, of course, Meta World. Uh, yeah, Meta World VR, right? From Hello VR. They're using that same technology, but everybody says Meta World VR is a complete and utter scam. Nobody is saying Nostos is. This is NetEase Games is going to be having that in early 2019, hopefully, or spring 2019. Dreams. Dreams is still very hyped. That is coming in early 2019. We're hoping for a release date for Star Child. I'm personally hyped about this. If you guys liked Lucky's Tale, you're probably going to really like Star Child. I like the demo that was available on P on the demo disc number two. Vacation Simulator. I haven't heard about this in a million years. Hot Shots Golf is coming next spring to PlayStation VR. Windlands 2 is ranking in the top 20 because you know what? If you want this on Steam, you're still waiting for it. If you're a Vive player and you don't want to deal with Revive and you don't want to buy the exclusives on the Oculus Store, you're still waiting for Windlands 2. I believe it's probably like January or February 2019. Half-Life 2 VR mod, we should probably just erase this off of here. I don't know why we continue to list it. Darasene is coming, I believe, like November 6th or something. That's another big one from software coming in a matter of like 10 days or so, right? Or two weeks or whatever. This is going to be out. Blunt Force is coming. That's the top 20. We got Megalith, you know. So look, there's lots of great stuff on here, guys. District Steel. There's lots of PlayStation VR games that are mixed in here as well. Twin Peaks, Transpose from Secret Location. That's coming. In Death is coming to PSVR. A lot of people sleeping on that. But this is just our top 50, and there is so much good stuff. I actually had more good stuff. I could have gone all the way. I could have made like a top 75. And what I'm thinking about is making, is, is possibly doing a top 100 with all VR games because I think we might actually have a top 100. There might actually, you know, I think I could actually create a top 100. And I haven't even thrown Oculus Quest games in there as well. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of good stuff that is still coming down the pipe in the not too distant future. Um, now, I just throwed on a trailer. I just threw on a trailer for Accounting Plus. And you know what? I have not played this. However, good news. Good news, ladies and gentlemen. Steve Bishop knows this. VR Roundtable, we did get a preview code for Accounting Plus. So this is a game I'm going to try hopefully later this afternoon. The Zero Caliber demo, you know, a lot of different things I got to try. But we have, I believe, a review code, preview code, whatever you want to call it, for Accounting Plus. So I am going to go ahead and check this out later today. Uh, so I'll be able to report on Accounting Plus tomorrow. So that should be kind of cool. Uh, so we do have that. Let's see. And Bullet Ape says, No Man's Sky, still an inventory simulator. Still can't be bothered to play it. A hundred plus hours to find the secret at the center of the galaxy. Effing disappointment of the decade. Don't say that to Gary of VR Roundtable fame because he really wants to play that in VR. And you know what? I kind of want to check it out in VR. Oh, Andy Sky says, You don't work, Steve? You're unemployed? What are you doing? You're watching Oprah? Are you watching... Uh, you know, it's funny because people that are unemployed, right? Do you guys ever watch any of the daytime like soaps or like these daytime talk shows like Dr. Oz and, and Steve Harvey and all these shows? Because they'll have special commercials on there that are designed to appeal to people that are just basically out of work. It's so funny. No, Steve has a legitimate job, Andy Sky. In fact, Steve works his ass off. 
I give Steve tremendous props and tremendous credit because this guy has a real legit job. He's flying all over the freaking world. He's like in England one day, he's in Italy another day. The dude is a jet setter, but he still finds time to play these VR games. Plus he has somebody living in his house. He recently had a personal tragedy. You know, my heart goes out to Steve and his family for like this is real life shit like he's got some real life shit going on and through all of this he's still able to come on and do these shows you know every couple weeks or every week on vr roundtable and he's the guy really honestly steve is the guy that's kind of holding everything together with vr roundtable in terms of the production like he's really the mind he's like you know, Wizard of Oz. He's the guy behind the curtain that is holding the whole production together. So much love for Steve. He does have a job, absolutely. And Steve says, there was a rumor that Sony had a Demo Disc 3 coming soon. Hopefully we'll get a peek at games to be released on it like Demo Disc 2. That would be awesome. And Shurzad Khan City says, PSVR is killing it while Oculus is killing their Rift. I don't know, uh, yeah. Um, again, my take, you know, Steve, I'm curious, Steve, while you're in chat, if you're still here, Steve, have you, have you seen what I've been talking about regarding like the Oculus Rift kerfuffle? I'm curious if Steve has the exact opposite take for everything. Um, you know, because that would be an interesting debate back and forth, me and Steve. Or I wonder if Gary has an has a complete opposite take, or maybe Chris. But I'm sure that when we do our episode of VR Roundtable, oh yeah, I can't wait to discuss the drama. Yeah, so maybe we'll just save it. We'll save it for Sunday. That's going to be fun. Um, it's always fun. I love drama, and I love it when there's arguments. As long as, you know, people don't get too emotionally involved in it, we can have a, a discussion, you know, we can have a debate. It can go back and forth. I'm good with that. I like that. Um, and Steve Bishop says, I believe where there's smoke, there's fire to a degree. Okay, yeah, let's hold on to those thoughts. We can get into it on Sunday. That'll probably just be fun. It'll be more enjoyable if we don't know what everybody's thinking prior. Um, Kev Gret says, if Beat Saber is getting released in 2018... Paris is the place to announce the date. It absolutely is, and it needs to absolutely happen. Uh, we really, and Paradise Decay says, at Steve Bishop, I tip my hat to you, sir. Yeah, dude, Steve is banging away on a lot of different things. He is a busy beaver, and, uh, you know, much love to Steve, no question about it. Uh, let's see here, what else are we going to get it into? <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty much... Okay, oh, Steve is talking about, I want someone to email us if you can find the Odyssey Plus for sale anywhere. They said it was launched. Yeah, do you guys know, here's an inside tip. Steve is kind of interested, right, in getting an Odyssey Plus. Like, he's pretty tempted. Um, Steve, I believe, is, is really debating whether or not he's going to go after a Pimax 5K Plus or maybe try this Odyssey Plus. And I think he's kind of debating between the two. I'd love to get a hold of somebody at Samsung and say, dude, somebody at Samsung, send me an Odyssey Plus. I promise I'll send it back. I promise I will. I promise I'll send it back. Um, but yeah, that'll be... F oh, he's going for both, honestly. Like he wants to get... He wants to be the next MRTV. He wants to get in there where Sebastian always has everything. That would be sweet. Um, but yeah, that's kind of that. Let's see if we got any last second stories. Uh, I haven't checked out Road to VR. We can see what Road to VR has on their, their mainline topics here. Okay, let's go ahead and bounce over to Road to VR real quick. So over at Road to VR, they are talking about the survival horror game Siren, which is coming to PSVR on November 6th. Again, these games are just around the corner. We saw the trailer for, I don't know if we saw this trailer, but we did see a Siren trailer yesterday. And I was saying that this has been available on Oculus and Vive for a long time. I've never played it. I don't hear a lot of talk about it. Like it isn't on the top 200, I don't think, of the Vive or the Rift. But, you know, it is coming to PSVR. Maybe the game's been reworked quite a bit. It might be pretty cool over there. We did find out about this Crazy Machines VR. It's kind of, you know, lets you make these wild Rube Goldberg-inspired creations. Sometimes that stuff makes my brain hurt. Has anybody else, like, you know, when you get into these games where it's like all this weird perspective stuff, 
Like sometimes that stuff just makes my brain hurt and I don't even want to deal with it. Um, and then uh, let's see, V Time opens new U.S. office. Uh, we have the that show that's going on in Japan where like 200,000 people have showed up, shown up. Uh, they're promising the Jingzi province promises to invest 460 million in AR VR. China is AR VR crazy, man. They really are. Paradise was saying we need to move to China. I tend to agree to agree with that. Oculus patents wireless relay tech for VR headsets. Now, do you think this is any kind of a surprise that this has leaked out? I think you're going to see a lot of little Oculus stuff leak out that will start to suggest, oh yeah, they're making Rift 2. They're working on all these advancements. There's going to be some shit that's going to start to leak out, ladies and gents. But I believe it is strategic leaks, in my opinion. The Oculus Go screencasting, I tried to get this to work yesterday. I didn't get it to work. And I think I figured out my problem. I think I have to, uh, I have to turn off my iPhone, <clears throat> completely turn it off and reboot it. And then I think that program will allow it to work. Steve, I don't know if you're still in chat, but have you tried the Oculus uh, screencasting for your Go? Have you tried that out? Has anybody else tried the screencasting? Do you like it? Did it work well? I remember reading somebody tried it and they just had a frozen screen. Um, like it kind of worked, but it didn't work quite great. So, you know, I don't know. Um, so Hussein X says, effective PPI has been doubled on Odyssey Plus. Yeah, but we want to know, does it really look like that? Does it really look like that? Jim Hall says, Odyssey Plus looks promising. Uh, DLG27 says, hit, hit the likes, people. Yeah, absolutely go ahead and do that. Uh, Bullet Ape says, how's the tracking on Samsung? Is it the same as all the mixed reality or is it a little bit better than the rest? I know their controllers are supposed to be a little bit better than the rest, but the tracking is basically the same system. I am kind of looking forward to like Windows Mixed Reality 2.0, a totally legit Windows Mixed Reality 2.0. I'm looking forward to that. We haven't got that yet. The Odyssey Plus isn't really that. It has some improvements, some ergonomical improvements that might be really good. It would be nice if we had an Odyssey, a regular Odyssey owner buy this Odyssey Plus and they could really compare it back and forth. They would really know the differences and then they could sell off their old Odyssey. You can grab an old Odyssey, by the way, brand new for 350 bucks. They're kind of clearing out the channel. Maybe that's one of the reasons we haven't seen the Odyssey Plus anywhere is they're trying to kind of clear the retail channel of all the original Odysseys for 350, which it's tempting. It's tempting because you're saving 150, but you got to have that screen door. You know, you got to try that screen door elimination technology and see how well it works. Steve Bishop says, once I rebooted the Go, it worked. Did not have to reboot my phone. Okay, so it's rebooting the Go. Now, what do we mean by rebooting? Are you talking about like just turning it off and on? Just turn it off and on because I think I turned it off and on or maybe I didn't. Okay, maybe I need to turn it off and on. Or are we talking about like reformatting, like re, re, uh, redoing the whole thing or just turning it off and on if that's all it is. Um, <clears throat> so I'll have to do that. Um, Odyssey Plus has OLED panels. The first one had OLED panels as well. And I don't think the panels are any different. I think it's just the, the coating or whatever that they put on top of it. Crunchy says, regarding the fanboy comments from yesterday, why can't people just be upset that a VR leader is going through drama regarding a second generation rift? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Once I rebooted the Go, it worked. Did not have to reboot my phone. I think I read that one already. It works well, but no audio, just like recording. Ah, so there is, is a hitch. But at least people can see what you're doing. And if you're playing your Oculus Go in front of a lot of people, and if you're using the belt-in audio rather than headphones and you have it turned up really high, then people that are kind of like sitting on the sofa right by you, they could kind of hear what's going on. So you just have to power cycle it. So maybe that's why it didn't work for me that first time. 
All right, folks. Well, we've been well over an hour. I don't know why I've gone so long today. It's been well over an hour. I need to get out of here. I am absolutely starving. I've got a lot of stuff I've got to try today. I've got to try the zero caliber demo. I've got to try some accounting plus, and I've got to try the screen the screencasting for my Oculus Go, which I still haven't tried that yet. So I've got a lot of stuff on my plate, and I've got to update a lot of uh, charts on VR game rankings. I got to update the last 90 days charts. Absolutely. So yeah, check out the website if you get a chance. Be sure to go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Be sure to like the videos, even the shit shows. You even got to like the shit shows because without the shit shows, we don't get the good shows. And how would you know a good show if you didn't have a shit show? So you need the occasional shit show. Alrighty, guys, I got to bounce out of here. That's going to go ahead and do it. But tomorrow is Friday, my day. It's a great day. 11 a.m., somewhere around there. I should be broadcasting on this here channel, and I will see everybody then. So have a good one. See you guys later. Take it easy. Bye-bye.